G'day and welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to look at the uh, very topical issue at the moment about the uh, Telstra uh, share buyback. So Telstra have uh, you know, made an offer to their existing shareholders that they're going to buy back um, shares off them um, and it's these buybacks, which we've dealt with quite a lot in the past, uh, can be quite complex because there's a lot of tax implications uh, to them. So what I would suggest is there's two, two factors to consider. I'll go through some of the, uh, the details of it just out of your interest, um, but I would suggest that you get uh, personal taxation advice and also uh, personal financial advice. You know, do you still want to hold Telstra? Uh, you know, so there's investment implications and there's tax implications. So I'll just give you a quick rundown on um, on Telstra and uh, the way these share buybacks work because they're quite they're a win win. So win for Telstra, win for shareholders if uh, people are wanting to sell. So I'll give you just a quick rundown, and these are based on figures a couple of days ago. Uh, it's one, sorry, five dollars fourteen. Uh, it's a bit rough. So what Telstra do with these buybacks, or what all the companies do, is that they offer offer to buy your shares back, and you can tender your shares in at a discount between six and and up to fourteen percent. So you're actually selling your shares at a reduced amount. Uh, in between here, there's a few other options that Telstra provide as well, but we often suggest because of the tax outcomes that people apply for the you know, to sell their shares at the maximum discount. So based on that, um, you'd be selling them at $4.42, which is a 72 cents discount to the current share price. Now, you know, obviously this doesn't make any huge amount of sense to be selling something off market at a discount to uh, um, what they're trading at, but the, the, devil, you know, the detail is in the, in the tax outcomes. So of that $4.42, only one dollar seventy-eight is actually seen um, as as the capital component, leaving a very substantial two dollars sixty-four, which is a fully franked dividend. So, as we know, these franking uh, dividends come with a, a, a credit, a tax credit. And that tax credit is one dollars thirteen. So, when you get that back, when you do your tax return, and I'm, I am talking within a nil tax environment here, so self-managed superannuation funds uh, that are in pension mode, um, you know, that's where there's zero tax. So, you get this full benefit back, and that comes in at at five dollars fifty-five. So quite complex in terms of the, the tax outcomes and that's where the value is. It's with these uh, the, the franking credit system that Telstra's got excess credits that they can utilise to make this a win for themselves to be able to purchase shares back at a discount to the current pricing but also a win for their investors that want to sell their shares because of the, uh, you know, the tax outcome. So yeah, a, a, good, a good option for people that want to exit Telstra. I hope you liked the video. Um, yeah, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you like, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening.